Hey everybody, my name is John. I'm a voice actor based out of Los Angeles, and I just woke up. Last week, I put out a tweet that said, Hey voice actors, reply to me below with your best voice acting work. It can be a demo, a scene, etc. I'll react to it in a video. Hearts. Now, I did not expect the tweet to blow up as much as it did. We got some really high profile voice actors responding to this. Among those being Keiji, who voices Ichiban in Yakuza, Satoru Gojo in Jujutsu Kaisen, and lots of other things. As amazing as that is, and as awesome as Keiji is, I've gotten ramen with him once, he's very cool. I really wanna open the door to absolutely everybody. Uh, it doesn't matter what your skill level is, I just wanna see your best voice acting work, whatever you're most confident. I'm not gonna be overly critical with any of my analysis of anyone's voice acting. But without further ado, let's just get right into these. So at the top of this list here, obviously KG is going to be at the top. He's probably the highest profile voice actor that responded to my tweet. He posted a scene from Yakuza Like a Dragon, which happens to be the ending scene. Uh, so if you don't want spoilers for Yakuza Like a Dragon, just click ahead a little bit. I'll put a timestamp right up here if you need one. I used to live near here. This is the, the lockers in Shibuya, if I'm remembering correctly. I told you. That's him. I've known you for 20 odd years. I figured you'd come here. Oh, look at the expressions on their faces too. It's crazy. Call it a hunch. I thought maybe some of my words managed to get through to you. God. I wait, hold on. I'm sorry. I'm I'm sorry to pause it, but I just got chills. The fact that this is ADR, this is a dub. So they're not moving the lip flaps as far as I know, to the English voices. This is over the Japanese voices originally. And the facial expressions too. So not only do you need to act, you need to act within a specific time frame to match the original Japanese in altered dialogue. All of that aside, this is really solid emotional voice acting. Back, back to the video, enough of my interrupting. Maybe you actually did decide to start over from the bottom and work your way back up. I figured if you did, you come back to where Arakawa-san first found you. Where our stories began. You don't have any idea what I'm going through. Oh, he's really good too. I'm tired of your shit, Ichiban. Oof. All we're doing here is having a conversation. So come on. The gun's really not necessary. Why don't you stop pointing that thing and give it to me? It's so intense. The emotional intensity here is just, it's incredible. It's, it's, not, it's not too much either. What's wild to me is just the fact that this is a very Japanese game made for the Japanese language, for Japanese actors with Japanese facial capture, all of this stuff, and they absolutely knocked it out of the park with the dub. Dubbing is hard. Dubbing gets a really bad rap for being so difficult. They're really bringing in these emotions and making them real. It's really good. It is solid acting. I hope that doesn't set the bar too high for other people, but I think that's just a good place to start off in the video to show really good acting and, you know, what voice acting can be. And KG, if you're watching this, let's get spicy ramen again soon. That was fun. As soon as all this, uh, so here we have a fan dub scene, which is interesting. This is very hit or miss, but let's see what you got. Lord Isaac is quite upset with you, Grinchow. Come. Your punishment for these acts will be decided in Hoiko Mundo. Fine, then let's go. Hey, you! Hold on! Hold on. That was pretty good. That that Grimjow was pretty good. I know it's it's kind of imitating a voice, but that is pretty good. I'm a big Grimjow fan. I love Grimjow. I approve. That was really good for a fan dub, man. But I definitely would encourage you guys, if you want to improve in voice acting, to really hone the acting because the voice is secondary to how the acting is. Because when you get a script for a project or you get a script for an audition, you might get a vocal reference, but you're not gonna get the exact way it was voiced because it hasn't been voiced yet. That's your job, you know? That's gonna be up to you. And the same people that you imitate, will most likely be down the line, the same people that are competing, I don't like the word competing, the same people that you're up against for the audition. So just something to keep in mind. But overall, 
it's it's pretty good. Oh boy, here we go. We have a fan dub for Metal Gear Rising. I'm gonna be a stickler for this one because I <laughs> I hear I got a I got a pretty good Raiden. I've voice matched Raiden before for some stuff. Let's see what you got. Doctor, turn off my pain inhibitors. What? This... this is madness. Mm. Do it! <sighs> Alright. <laughs> Already, I'm not really hearing the intensity here. I'm not hearing the sound of a man who's feeling pain for the first time in many, many years. It needs to be really intense for me to believe that it's real. It doesn't sound like you're confident that you are Raiden. It sounds like you are impersonating him and you're not allowed to scream. What you need to do is rip out an MP3 of Raiden speaking from Metal Gear Rising, put it in Audacity or something, and you practice that voice until the waveforms are exactly the same as Raiden's. You make it so there's no difference between you and him. I found the original video here so you guys can hear the difference. You hear that intensity and the, do it! You need to get there. You need to get shaky, you know? I've had way too much coffee. <laughs> That's another thing there is that long drawn out scream. <laughs> you gotta feel it instead of just a, ah! You have to really dig into it. The only reason I'm being so harsh with this is just because this is a scene that was already acted. There's actors that have already played out the scene and it's all laid out for you. So what are you gonna do when you get a script and you have to read it with no references and impress somebody with it? Going up against a ton of other people. And I want you to do well because you do have a good ear for tone. That's good. That's a really good thing. You you can work with that. And again, we can we can all always get better. I'm I'm getting better every day. Most professional voice actors are getting better every day. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Here we got Alan Lee, who voiced in what is this? The Great Pretender, episode 22. Let's check it out. That's Alan for sure. It's <laughs> a good laugh. What? Is this little farce of yours finished yet? What did you say? You can play the tough guy all you want, but you- Shut your mouth! Don't pretend to understand me! I think that alone is worth talking about. Doing that laugh is very difficult. Again, I'm gonna bring up dubbing and ADR because this is an anime. So the way that was recorded was most likely not one take. That is- Three to four takes, you can correct me if you want, Alan, of different segments of the same laugh. So imagine having to start the laugh in one place, hear it back over, carry it on to the next, carry it on to the next, carry it on to the next. It's really hard. It's hard to laugh like that even when it's not ADR. So props to you, Alan. You play a very good, insane maniac. <laughs> Apologize to Dorothy when you see her and tell her you're sorry your plan sucked, because it did. Then... Both of you can beg mom for forgiveness. I heard that little small intake of breath as he like pressing the sword into his chest. That really makes it feel real for me. Good job, Alan. That's really good. You guys sent so many submissions and I'm so sorry I'm not gonna be able to get to all of them. Maybe I'll do a part two when I'm not as tired as I am now. Here's a guy that animated his own demo or someone animated it for him. That's very interesting. I actually haven't seen that before. G'day. If you're watching this, I'll bet you're looking for a voice actor and you've come to the right place because ever since I was a little boy, people... 
Okay, <laughs> you could have the best Morgan Freeman impersonation ever. That's that's fine. It's good. It's fun at parties, right? Like, it's it's a cool thing to be able to do. It's not really gonna get you anywhere in voice acting, though. There's really no place for impersonations except for YouTube, TikTok, memes or something. And I'm not trying to knock on you, dude. Your voice in the beginning is great. That's a really good commercial voice. Maybe even a character voice. If you decided to do a character in your natural speaking voice, I'm sure you could book if you just brought in the acting from those impersonations and brought it into you. My only problem with impersonations is it feels like you're holding voice acting at arm's length and you're just not gonna book that way. If you bring the acting in and really work on yourself as an actor and not just a voice, you'll do really well. You'll have enjoyed the sound of my voice. And I figured you either get busy talking or you get busy dying. So, why am I the guy for the job you asked? Well. See, when you're you, you sound great. And that's a big compliment. When you're you, you sound fantastic. I just want more of you, man. And that's gonna be easy, right? That's gonna be easy. You're not gonna have to spend time doing these impersonations. You, you can just be yourself. The most castable and the most brandable voice that you have is literally your natural speaking voice because no one else has that. No one else can fully replicate your natural speaking voice. So work on that first because there's always gonna be better impersonators and there's always gonna be better voices, but no one else is gonna be as good at acting your voice as you if you work on it. Oh, here's someone voiced in uh, in Ruby. That's pretty cool. Between our secret weapon and my semblance, you all couldn't be in better hands. See, you just don't get it. This is not a situation where everyone wins. Mantle needed me. And to the marigolds, that meant I wasn't their son anymore. Is this your natural speaking voice? Cause this sounds really good. I really like this. I think this is the perfect like a uh, piggyback to what I was just talking about because this is someone speaking naturally and it fits a character so well. I haven't seen Ruby, but I really like this voice and I really like this voice for this character. Here we got Bill Butts. He's an acquaintance of mine. Amazing voice actor. He's in Jojo, he's in One Punch Man. He's all over the board and he's fantastic. This is the first time I'm hearing you as a Chocolata, right? That's his name? This might be one of those instances where I say the, the dub is better than the sub. Not gonna lie. And I speak Japanese, I can say that. <laughs> I'm all tingly. You think I'd be used to it by now, but the sweet sight never gets old. Just be sure to cheat this way so I can get a good look before you go ahead and die. Do they plan on cutting off our limbs? Who knows? They could be planning on asking the disabled veterans for cooperation. Oh, I love that because it sounds just like you. That is literally just you acting, you know? That is your natural voice. And you have such a good natural voice. Hunter reporting in. Specimen acquired. I don't know why you put such a high price on these things. They barely put up a fight. Oh, is that you? That's you? You got good range too. I think Bill is one of those people that has worked so long and just honing his craft and acting. Of course, we're all getting better all the time, but he can really branch out and show off his range because he's worked on his natural voice so much. I know he has a lot of background in stage and stuff like that, uh, which is a massive benefit, but damn, I wanna hear you as like Slade in Teen Titans or something. I think that would be great. This one's pretty cool because way back, like maybe three or four years ago, I was in a fan dub, right? Just because I wanted to see if I could do it. I was just starting out voice acting. And this guy was in the fan dub with me. And since then, he's grown quite a bit. He's been in a lot of productions and stuff. This is his demo, so I'm excited to hear it. I actually haven't heard this one before. Come one, come all! Hear the tale of the mighty warriors who slayed the dragon of Yorthax. Are you sure we should go in there? I mean, the story said this place was ultra haunted. I mean, sure, it's good content, but we could get hurt or of course, possessed! I'll watch you all crumble. One by one, you will fall to- one thing he's done really well is, again, he knows what he's castable as. People will generally, in casting, listen to maybe five to 10 seconds of your demo. They're really not gonna give it that much of a listen because they have to listen to so many. Like, just think of what I'm doing right now. I'm just making a YouTube video and I don't wanna listen to all of these. I'm sure most of you are fantastic, but I'm gonna have to break this up into multiple videos and I'm not even casting anything. And Patrick has totally nailed the fact that he's very much castable as these first two voices and the rest of this demo 
is just showing off some good range. You've got some really strong acting here. It's awesome to see. I'm proud of you, man. Here's a guy named Bell that responded. He uh, is in Horimiya, I think. I think he's in Horimiya, which is a new anime that I'm obsessed with. So good job, Bell. That's awesome. I don't know, man. This place gives me the creeps. It's like one of those haunted houses with trap doors and monsters. And... Ah! Oh, what was that? Read my lips, creep. If I ever catch Ooh. you around here again, I'll rip you apart. You hear me? Look. Two very different characters. Kind of the scaredy cat comic relief, and then the school bully. I did something really similar with my demo, where the first voice I did was a villain voice, because I know 99% of the time I'm going to be voicing villains. That's just how my voice works. And the second one was like an edgy protagonist. It's uh, the two things that I think I was most strong at, and they had enough contrast to kind of bounce off each other. Again, would really drive home, the first 10 to 15 seconds of your demo are going to be the most important. So put a lot of effort into those first 10 to 15 seconds. I, I like that bell, that was awesome. All right, here's another voice demo. It says, hey game dev, indie dev animation, need a strong youthful voice to fit your protagonist or maybe a voice for a cold analytical scientist. Okay, so he knows what he's good at. At ease, men. I know this mission has been one hell of a ride, but today it is decided that you men win for- Is that your natural speaking voice? Or is that like, are you pushing that down quite a bit? Because at the top of the demo, you said youthful protagonist. I kind of want to hear that immediately upon clicking it. This doesn't sound like you. I don't know you, but the tone of your voice is telling me that this isn't your natural voice. It sounds like you're trying to act outside of your range, which you can totally work on. You can work on voices outside of your range, but it doesn't sound like you're quite there yet. For every innocent, so that they may love, prosper, and soar. Are you with me, men? I'm not buying that scream there. I need, I need a scream. Are you with me, men? You know, I need, I need something big. This is your demo. It's your best work. This is your whole brand. Your whole business is right here. So you really got to make sure it's the best of the best of you. So don't try to do something outside of your range and try to act in that. Try to act as Crimson Blazer VO. Be you. Can't do it, goddammit! Can't. I can't just lie around here and waste my life away with this bullshit. Please, get out of my way. I'm not buying the screams typically. That one sounded more in the range of your natural voice, but I'm not, I'm still not buying the screams. I'm not buying the energy. I don't feel like you're really there. I would say my biggest advice to you is one, work in your natural range first and just bring that energy there, dude. Bring all the energy you can to this, to this role. There are certain places you gotta get to for me to believe that this is real, that I'm just not hearing. It's just, there's not enough energy. And when I say energy, I don't just mean get as loud as you can. I just mean bring everything you have to the character. Like with Keiji in the beginning with Yakuza, right? That is very pulled in. It's very reserved. But there is so much energy. It's palpable. Palpable. I was literally getting chills from that because the energy is conveyed through his tone. It's conveyed through the acting, through the character, through actually feeling something. It doesn't have to be like, oh, let's go. You can have reserved, brought in energy to convey intensity. I want you to be more intense. Another thing I want to point out as I scroll through these submissions is just like, if you are submitting to a casting director, it is so important that you know exactly what you want to show them. Because I'm seeing a few of these like, oh, I voiced Hoshi in this, and it will be four hours long. I can't sit there and scroll through and look for Hoshi just for one of the submissions. It could be the best acting ever, but if I'm a casting director, which I'm not, but hypothetically, I don't have time to find that. I would just put together your best work into a reel or a demo or something where I can click play and I can immediately hear your best acting right then and there. That would help me a ton. <laughs> Here's one by Amy Smith. I don't know her personally, but I know she's done a lot of work. I believe she's out of Australia, but it's kind of a cool example of how much work you can get outside of Los Angeles, Texas, London, stuff like that. I think this is a good display of, like I said before, how much work you can get if you're outside of a professionally competitive area. You can still get really good auditions and you can still record remotely. I think one important thing to keep in mind is what kind of work are you going to be doing? I know Amy in particular does a lot of video game work. So that kind of work is going to be kind of like Overwatch. Uh, lots of one-liners, lots of battle cries, lots of attack reacts, lots of 
grunts, lots of pain reacts, things like that, screaming. So if you're remote, I would definitely follow in her footsteps. Maybe take a look at this reel. Look at the kind of work that she does. Never be discouraged if you live outside of a professionally competitive area because she obviously does very well for herself. My most recent demo reel, I'm very proud of it. Need a cautious sidekick, underdog pro tag, psycho killer. Uh, okay, let's check it out. I've noticed kind of a trend with uh, a lot of these demo reels starting off with kind of a scared sidekick protagonist kind of thing, which isn't inherently bad, but if I'm a casting director casting my project and I hear every demo reel start with like a, are you sure we should be going in here? It's kind of scary. You're kind of like, hmm, which, like, how am I supposed to do this? You know, everything's starting to sound the same, but let's keep listening. I want to see, because you got a good voice. Ooh. Where are you going, patient? You're late for your appointment. Uh, that's pretty good. I like that a lot, man. That's that's awesome. I, I really like that. That's sweet. That's awesome. This is a good demo. You're a good actor and you've got a good wide range of voices. The only criticism I had at the beginning was really because I'm hearing that consistently among a ton of demos, but that's not your fault, you know? That's just kind of the industry standpoint, I guess. But otherwise, this is solid. This is really good. Good job, man. I'm sorry I couldn't get to all the submissions. There were a lot. Maybe I'll do a part two to this. Regardless, if you did submit your demo or share the tweet, thank you. That means a lot. Uh, this was really fun to do and it was great to be able to kind of review various levels of voice acting. I just want to say again, if I criticized you in this video, it is in no way meant to bring you down or tear you apart or anything like that. I just want you to be the best that you can possibly be because I know everyone is capable of being professionally competitive within their own niche. And I want you all to be able to find that. If you guys liked the video, it would really help me out if you could like and subscribe and leave me a comment if you disagree or agree with anything I've said. Or if you have critique for me, you can listen to my demo. My demo is pretty outdated. It could use a little critique. If you guys want to follow me on Twitch, I stream at twitch.tv slash spooky live. And you can follow me on Twitter at spooky live as well. Thank you guys all for watching. Hope you have a wonderful day. I'm going to go back to bed uh, and I'll catch you next time.